And most people don't realize, but rubies is one of the rarest commodities in the world. We are hearing from the gemologists, we are hearing from the mining company, we are hearing from other people who have been there. But unless you go on the ground yourself, the story doesn't, the whole story doesn't come together. It's really hot in here, it's a bit hard to breathe, but as far as I spoke to him and I understood is this mine is 120 feet deep in and they have digged it to here and then they found out the feasibility is not too good so they're not going to find <coughs> too much going on so they blocked it and they might dig down and keep going down or they might go the other way but as of here they have blocked it at the moment. What is it? Basically just now when we went on that side, it was very hard to breathe because on that side there's no oxygen. So this is the oxygen tank from the cylinders up that they send the oxygen down for the people down here to work so at least we can breathe better. When you're nearby here, you can breathe. By seeing this, next time a client looks at a beautiful stone and picks out a small inclusion, I will be able to explain to them much better of where this and how much hard work is actually happening here. Now, honestly, seeing, the, seeing the, the Sri Lankan mines and the sapphire mines in Ratnapura, okay, I knew this was much larger, but okay, 50 times larger? 80 times larger, 100 times larger, this is, it's a completely different thing. It's uh, thousands of times larger than what goes on in the uh, sapphire mines. Normally gemstone or corundum mines are, I wouldn't say small, but not such a large, large operation. The size of this operation is just incredible. Amount of work, amount of, amount of soil they're being able to process each day. Our customers need to know. Yes. Customers, a lot of people are using rubies, a lot of people are buying rubies, but no one knows how rare this thing is. So here we are walking around at the Montepios Ruby Mine in Mozambique. This is something we have never seen before. Rubies are just on the ground. We're picking them up. Within two minutes I was able to pick up quite a nice bunch of rubies. Beautiful, nice red color. Very, very impressive. I've heard, heard stories that you can actually walk on rubies. I never knew that it was, it was gonna be a possibility to just be able to pick up rubies from the ground. We always heard stories because right now, as the gem business is growing and uh, advancing, ethical mining and ethical trade is a very big thing in the trade. So we always heard that Gemfield is an ethical, ethical mining company to actually see it and see the way and how organized they are at what they're doing. It, it really opens a lot of eyes and we can talk to our clients and we can explain to them what we saw. Yes, I think it's a great thing that Gassant is doing. And we had the chance to visit the Sort House and we did see some very nice stones from the C grade and F grade. It's very exciting to know that sitting here at the Muglodo pit and seeing the stones being mined here that hopefully there's some few very nice stones and we're looking forward to see it in Singapore at the auction. We had a young man and an older man, father and son. We had our partners with us, and the foursome of us were a very strong team with many different talents that were needed to, to win in these auctions. So I think the team works very well because everyone has their own 
technicalities and their expertise. Like our partners, they are rough experts and they're able to see the rough. My father, so he knows the prices and the market market situation very well. So that way we are able to value the rough and come out with a figure that always gives us a good chance of winning at the auctions. I think a lot to do in this auctions when you put so many competitors in one room is human nature. In the end, it's human nature that comes to play. Nobody tells anybody what price they're putting, but everybody is looking at everybody's movements. Everybody is guessing. Everybody is imagining. Because everybody is in basically the same business. To try to get the best rough that they want to buy for the right price, cut and polish it, and make money. It's very basic. So now we were waiting to see this lot right here. This lot has five parts, A, B, C, D, and E. The most interesting one looks like the, a pair of the F grade lot. So we are going to be interested in this. We're going to have a look at this. This is the pair that we were talking about that we wanted to see on this table just now. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. So it's done. Done. Yes, done. It's yes. done. Good luck. Thank you. The team have had to move two million tons of covering soil and rock in order to get 400,000 tons of ore that is being put through our washing plant. And that has resulted in today's auction of just 427 grams. So we've gone from 2.4 million tons of rock handling down to 427 grams. And that's what we're talking about here today. Good evening, everybody. Firstly, congratulations to all the winners. We've managed to sell all of the schedules at auction one, which we, we are happy about, and I'm sure you're all very happy about. The winner of Schedule C is Sun Enterprises. <laughs> The hidden mysteries sometimes are not visible in the rough form. When we are in Singapore, we are doing our best to look at everything that is embedded in the stone. And experience, tens of years of experience, helps us to identify most of the things that are in the stone. The pluses and the minuses and what will actually come out of it. Because it's, it's all a game of understanding the rough and what is achievable from it. We cannot add anything because these are non-heated stones. We have to be very careful because the labs are going to be certifying it. So we go through these challenges and sometimes we have to leave one small cavity in the back of the stone because if we take out that cavity, we may lose one carat, which is unacceptable. There's a black dot there. We can see it when we put it in the water. We're going to remove that black dot by preforming the stone. That will be one of our first steps because that is what we don't want for sure. That's the black dot, right? This one. So you have to remove that. I think uh, he has cleaned the hole. The black is no more there. Uh, it's, it's like a polished hole in the stone. Yeah. This was a 993 rough. I started off, and it has now become a 5 carat 80 uh, preform. The preform is done. Okay. We're going to polish it right here, and we're going to take it through the journey of the polishing in Sri Lanka. And yeah. then, then, then we'll consider to repolish in Bangkok if we have some things left to do with it to bring out the full beauty of the stone. So that's, uh, let's, let's go for it then. Yeah. The stone was a 574 after the preform. So we might need to do a little bit of retouching in Bangkok on this one.
finish stone, so we lost about 60 points. We were able to take out all the four holes on both the sides, even the big one. At the back, it's still a little bit slanted, but me and dad will look over that and see if you want to straighten the, the culet side a little bit. So we'll have to see about that. Thank you. Phone is back. Phone is back. Perfect. Very happy. We've never had a storm like this. Well, we are a long established old company, sixth generation in this business, based in Bangkok. We are originally from Burma and we moved to Bangkok in 1963. I was born in Burma in 1960. My mother was born in Mogok. And we have a long tradition of um, polishing, cutting, trading in rupees and sapphires, passed from generation to generation. I am the fifth generation and he is my sixth generation, my son. He has joined the business and we are very proud to have him with us. Trust and integrity are the foundation of our company and that's what I have been trained by, by my parents that always work on trust and integrity and make sure that everything to the clients is open and that's, that's the, basically the underlying foundation of our company. We understand the quality of our clients. Again, I would go back to because we are sixth generation in the business. They see the relationship, long lasting relationship for the last 30, 40 years, and the trust is built from that. And I'm, I learned the quality of what our clients like from my parents. So, so basically in this business, it's passed, the knowledge is passed on from generation to generation. And the understanding of your clients and the needs of your clients are also passed on. Seven carat piece of rough that we had seen in the auction in Singapore. And we also have it filmed being cut in Sri Lanka. And now it's a beautiful stone ready for sale here in Hong Kong. So all the competitors are here, all the customers are here. It's a marketplace. So we are able to meet a lot of people, showcase our products and get good customer feedback. Very quickly, in a short time, in two days, we can learn a lot about what's going on in the market. We can learn about our prices. We can see who's needing what. So I guess the shows are more important than ever before now. Also when Anurag was young, Sanpal was very concerned. He was his only son and he always kept saying, we were three brothers, we could do something. What are we going to do with one son? How are we going to take our legacy forward? And I always told Anura, always told Sanpal, one son is better than having four sons if he is truly into the business and if we can truly pass on this legacy to him to carry it forward.